then to Morris Brown College. Now, Morris Brown College in Atlanta, Georgia was an extremely popular college back in the early 2000s. They were featured in the very popular movie, Drumline, starring Nick Cannon, and Outkast had a whole song dedicated to them using their marching band once again called Morris Brown College. But nowadays, Morris Brown College is a shell of its former self. Now, back in the early 2000s, they had, you know, a very booming population on campus of about 3,000 students. And now it has dwindled all the way down to about 40 students. What happened? There are no athletic teams. There's no football team. There's no band. There's no basketball team. There's nothing. In fact, their gymnasium is now used as a shelter for a homeless man. He went in and made it his whole entire house, okay? The football field has not been attended to in years. Dormitories are being burnt to the ground. There are no meal plans. There is no cafeteria. And the school is no longer accredited. Now, what does all that mean? And how in the world did this happen? What happened? Let's check it out. Morris Brown College was built on a foundation of black self-determination and resistance to white supremacy. The African Methodist Episcopal Church, which founded Morris Brown, was itself created in 1916 after discrimination within the Methodist Church forced black ministers in Pennsylvania to sue for the right to their own congregation. Morris Brown, a free black man, split from his own Methodist church in Charleston a few years later and left to found Emmanuel AME Church in the city in 1822. While authorities learned of this now famous slave uprising planned by Denmark Versi, a prominent black Methodist in Charleston, the plot failed. Versi and others were executed. Morris Brown and more than 100 other black men were arrested and charged with conspiracy. His church was burned down to the ground. Brown was never convicted, but he was held in jail for a year. He emerged in 1822 and would go on to become the second bishop of the AME Church, which today is the oldest independent, protested, domination-founded church in the world. Morris Brown College was established in 1881, 50 years after Brown's death and named in his honor. That year, trustees of the AME Church set out to create an educational institution in Atlanta for the moral, spiritual, and intellectual growth of Negro boys and girls. The college opened its doors on October 15, 1885, just 22 years after Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation with 107 students and nine teachers. Unlike Morehouse, Spelman, Clark, and Atlanta University, all also operating in Atlanta at the time, Morris Brown was a financially independent black institution funded almost entirely by black Americans through the AME church. The college got to buy for decades on contributions from the church's congregants. And despite Morris Brown's resistance for outside funding, it expanded slowly during the first two decades of the 20th century. The school was originally built on a small tract of land at the intersection of North Boulevard and Houston Street in the old fourth ward. Within 10 years from its first graduating class, Morris Brown went from one building to a campus with the addition of two structures. The college also expanded its curriculum from that of primary, secondary, and normal school to include coursework in home economics, nursing, tailoring and dressmaking, printing, commerce, music, and Finally, theology. in 1932, Atlanta University decided to move their campus to another side of Atlanta, and Fountain persuaded the school's trustees to allow Morris Brown to lease the university's former grounds. In doing so, Morris Brown College was placed in closer proximity to Atlanta's other thriving black schools. It also became the owner of some of the oldest structures in Atlanta. Atlanta University's Stone Hall was renamed to Fountain, and its North Hall renamed to Gaines Hall. Hall. After their move in 1932, that's when the success of Morris Brown College actually blossomed. They began accepting students and having students from all over the world to attend their small college in the heart of Atlanta. 
Throughout the years, this institution did suffer from bankruptcy and their own financial issues because they are just a small private institution who basically was relying on the church to stay afloat as well as limited government funding. Their early 2000s boost in popularity came from movies like Stomp the Yard and Drumline. They were also featured in many music videos and many thought they had the best band in Atlanta, if not the best band in the conference. Some people say that the longtime rivalry between Morris Brown College and Clark Atlanta is what is being depicted in Drumline. However, Morris Brown got to use their name because they are owned by African Americans, whereas Clark Atlanta and other bands and universities in Atlanta are owned by a higher up source nowadays. I don't know. That's just what I got off the internet. Now that I think about it, I don't know too many institutions that actually have used their real name in movies besides Morris Brown College. Everybody else has a fictional made up name as well as fictional made up Greeks. Now, keep in mind that on the outside, even though Morris Brown College was thriving in the early 2000s, they have had financial hardships their entire time of being open. They relied basically on church donations and tuition dollars. So over the years, they have not had it easy. In a February 1988 issue of Jet Magazine declared that at the time of its 106th anniversary, Morris Brown was enjoying dramatic growth with enrollment reaching 1,650 students. But by 1992, Morris Brown was experiencing a $6.5 million shortfall and had been placed on probation by the Southern Association of Colleges and Schools for poor accounting practices. So even back in 1992, for some reason, they could not keep their finances situated. Then President Samuel Jolly Jr. worked to turn the school finances around, eliminating the debt and generating a surplus of $2 million in 1996. Enrollment reached about 3,000 students and then crosswalked in. So when Cross arrived at Morris Brown College, it was troubled already. I already told you guys it was bankrupt in the past and in the past it just relied on students financial aid. So it was troubled but it wasn't in like foreclosure like it couldn't be saved. So when Cross arrived at Morris Brown College, it was financially troubled. While she was president, Morris Brown College obtained $3.4 million in federal insured student loans and Pell Grants in the names of ineligible students, including some who never attended the college, some who were enrolled part-time and partially who had left the money was used to pay the school's operating costs. Will y'all let that soak in? Okay. We're talking about insured student loans and Pell Grants in the name of ineligible. Okay. So we're not talking about students who could obtain the loans and go to the school we're talking about students who never even stepped foot on the campus we're also talking about students who didn't have high enough grades to go to the school even though they were disappointed they went to community college so let's let all of that sink in so what happened the southern association of colleges and school commissions on colleges Morris Brown's former accreditor stripped the college of its accreditation in 2002 after a former college president and financial aid director were found to be misappropriating money from the Department of Education. So this basically means that the accreditation was gone and you could not receive financial aid if you were a student at Morris Brown College, you would have to pay your entire way. You would not receive any aid from the government. That means no Pell Grant. That means that more students were going to Clark Atlanta. That means more students were going to the public institutions that were not trying to go to a private institution that was up the rails in money 
and they had to pay it out of pocket. There's no way they could do that. So that is why, that is why Morris Brown was turned on its head and became a shell of his former self. Because even as a private college, students still would go. They could receive financial aid, but in this, you know, circumstance, they could not receive financial aid from Morris Brown College. As popular as it was, people just cannot afford $20,000 a year for tuition. And that was a downclide of Morris Brown. In the years that have passed, I have seen Morris Brown turned into a homeless shelter. I've seen it turned into a tourist attraction. I've seen it turned into many things other than higher learning. And when I actually went to the website, I learned that they are now teaching about 40 students and they're asking for volunteer teachers. And as much as people give to this college during homecoming season and so forth, they still don't have enough to offset the debt that they owe people. So they're still in bankruptcy. If you guys didn't know, the college is in bankruptcy. But I would one day wish to see it return to its former glory because this is one of the colleges that I wanted to go to before everything happened and the accreditation was lost and everything like that. And I have went to an HBCU and I have experienced great times. So I know what this college means to a lot of people. So all I'm going to ask is what do you guys think about the turn of events that happened to Morris Brown College and be on the lookout for other videos.